Growing up, my brothers and I had to share everything. And since I was the baby, it was almost always me sharing my older brother's stuff. Oh, you got a bike? It's our bike now. So this rule of sharing also applied to video games. And back then, video games were not cheap. Video games these days are like $60. But in 2007, over 15 years ago, if my brothers and I wanted to play the newest Halo game, it costed my parents $60. Wait, what? That doesn't make any sense. I'm an econ major. I got my degree at UC freaking LA. I know that's not how the economy works. As time goes on, inflation exists, and prices go up for literally every good. Milk, gasoline, even tacos have gone up to $2 each. Long gone are the days where you could get tacos for $1. The good times! But for some reason, video games have barely changed their pricing. At least when it comes to new AAA titles. And the moment that they tried to charge consumers slightly more, people freaked out. So $60 has become the industry standard price. Which, if you consider what $60 was in 2007, that's kind of a win for the consumer. But should new games be worth $60? How much should a video game cost? I want to discuss each potential video game price point and see which type of games, in my opinion obviously, justify having their prices set this way. Starting with when I think of a game that's worth $60, the games that come to mind are long-awaited sequels in the most popular game series. The Mario games, Smash Bros, Zelda, basically anything Nintendo makes. These games are game of the year contenders that don't come out super frequently, but they are 100% worth the wait. But Nintendo's not the only company that does this. Sony has these games as well. Spider-Man 2, God of War, The Last of Us, these games have earned our respect and our money. This price point is also reserved for the developers who never miss. We're talking From Software with the Souls-like games, or the next big Bethesda open world title. Yeah, I know Bethesda in general hasn't been at their A game lately, but hopefully Starfield will probably be a game that's worth $60? There's countless examples of very solid games that are worth $60. What all of these games have in common is a ton of polish and a great gaming experience. Whether the game has a great story, or countless hours of solid gameplay, or both, these games make every dollar you put into it count. And if any game could be $70, hey hey, don't boo me, don't boo me, I'm just saying, if any game could be $70, most of these games would deserve it. You can't look at me in the face and say you haven't gotten thousands and thousands of hours on Skyrim, Smash Brothers, Elden Ring. You know you got your money's worth, and you also know that the developers earned the $60 pay grade. Now, there are a lot of games that think they are worth the $60 price point, but in all honesty, more and more of these games aren't proving that they are. You know what I'm talking about, the games that go on sale after like a week, or the games that are just recycled from the last entry, doing the same thing over and over again. These games are not worth $60, but you could justify putting out $40 for some of these games. Games from franchises that are honestly kind of dying, like Assassin's Creed, Gears of War, Crash Bandicoot, and even Sonic the Hedgehog. These games aren't even necessarily bad, but you don't trust the developer to update this game in a way that makes it feel worth $60. Then there's the yearly sequels, the Call of Duties, the FIFAs, all the sports games. You know exactly what you're gonna get, and a lot of the time, nothing really changed since the last game. Even $40 is kinda generous, but they earned the $40 by being a pretty big name brand. However, these yearly sequels seem to be always selling well regardless of their price point. But I do think more and more consumers are getting pretty over these games trying to pretend that they're even on the same level as other $60 titles, especially Call of Duty. It feels like every year, less and less people are buying these games. What's that? Modern Warfare 2 outsold everything else? Well, forget what I just said. The $40 price point is also a great place to price a completely new IP from a bigger developer trying a new genre. Cyberpunk comes to mind here. And if you ignore the bugs, which is really difficult to do, $40 seems pretty fair for this brand new game that you have no idea what to expect. The original Overwatch dropped at this price point as well, and it's a smart way to not scare away new customers from trying out the game in the first place. Especially if you're a multiplayer game and you need players to keep coming back. Some indie games try and sell their game at this price, but rarely does that price stay for very long. Unless it's a surprise hit like Ghost Runner, Deep Rock Galactic, or Minecraft. And let's be honest, Minecraft 
could easily sell for like $100. The fact that it's around $30 is kind of insane. However, I think $40 for a new indie game that's from an established indie company or franchise is reasonable. We're talking the sequel to Hollow Knight, that's easily worth $40. And I'm looking at you, Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. You better be worth $40, okay? But realistically, most indie games do not want to lose the opportunity of getting new players, and the majority of them start their pricing at or below this is a great price point for the up-and-comers, the underdogs, the indie games. So many incredible games throughout history were priced around this point. Castle Crashers, Hollow Knight, Rocket League, and Hades, $20. $20 seems to be the right amount to charge people for brand new original games from indie developers. Some of them should be worth more honestly, but usually the games are limited by their budgets, so they have to simplify the graphics and gameplay, and it usually means that the game isn't as long as your typical game, meaning that you could realistically beat them in like a week. They're not crazy long like Elden Ring. Oh my god, that game's long. Like the moment you think you finish the map, there's just like more map. But just because a lot of these games are shorter, they can still be very enjoyable experiences. However, if they were priced any higher, many fans who would have otherwise loved these games maybe couldn't justify or afford it. So it's a smart dollar amount to work with. But don't get me wrong, not every single indie game is worth $20 even. There are some weird games out there priced around this point that really aren't that good. But I wouldn't have tried them if they cost any more. So these are the main price points that games should fall under. $60 is a AAA masterpiece or just an extremely hyped sequel. $40 is a AAA game with less hype or just a bigger budget indie game. And for $20, you can get the rest of the indie games or just smaller scoped games. There's obviously always going to be exceptions. This is not a rule. This is just my opinion. And as long as people keep buying FIFA, the prices will never truly make any sense. But that's just one way to kind of look at the value of games that we play. However, more recently, there's a new way that games have been priced priced, and they are the Lately, most online multiplayer games have done away with the price point at all, and instead choose to be free to play. AAA developers and indie developers have all tried to be successful with this model, relying solely on microtransactions to remain afloat. Games like Fortnite, League of Legends, Apex, Warzone, Valorant, and now even Halo and Overwatch 2, they are all using this model to varying levels of success. But the pricing for their microtransactions have become so ridiculous. Every game has a $10 battle pass, and every single thing that used to be free costs money now. Don't get me wrong, these games are certainly still a net positive for most players, since now anyone and everyone can play without charge. But now, people are unknowingly spending way over $60 on multiple games for cosmetics that used to be part of the game's normal progression. By being a lot of games only real progression and using a bit of FOMO, you end up feeling like you have to buy stuff for every single game. For this game, and this game, and this game, and this game. It's gotten pretty bad. Especially when you consider that if any of these games die, the servers are just gone and all of those things that you bought are gone with it. And I look so drippy in Hyperscape. <laughs> So while I do prefer games being free to play so most people can enjoy the experience, I'm always going to advocate for cheaper cosmetic prices and more ways to unlock these cosmetics in game, besides swiping my credit card. But I really do think that more indie companies should be straying away from the free to play model, because there's a lot of effort that gets put into these games, but a lot of the time, these games just don't make any of that money back. Games that might have actually otherwise made their money back if they just sold their game for like $20. We're talking Spellbreak, Blood Hunt, Splitgate. So what's my point? My point is we as a consumer need to really think about how much we spend on video games. When should I spend $60 and when not to? At the end of the day, we as the consumer have a lot more power than we think and we are the ones that set these prices. Simple economics will tell you that if nobody buys a game at $60, it will go down in price until people buy it for a lower price. Why do you think the prices are still $60? If they could, and they would, they would sell it for 80 or 100 or 120, but they can't because we, the consumer, don't let them. This also applies for free-to-play games and their cosmetics. We have to vote with our wallets and support developers who treat us with respect and don't sell us an unfinished product or the same junk over and over again. These developers who create the best games work their butt off and at times they're overworked just to get out their product and they deserve to be compensated for their hard work, especially if the game is incredible. At the end of the day, the value of each game is extremely subjective. Maybe $60 is too much for you, or barely anything. One man's trash, another man's treasure. Either way, remember that you have more power in setting the price for these games than you think. Thank you so much for watching, 
and I'll catch you later. 